noticed some of my favorite booktubers are struggling a little bit. So for all of you that are in a, a reading slump or you're struggling a little bit with your ambitious TBRs, I feel you. I feel you, my fellow readers. Read a book over 400 pages. Boom. What you vote for. I'll give you little symbols for what you vote for, okay? Yes, Jennifer over, sorry for the sighing, it's that time of year, I don't want to keep apologizing for all the noise, I live in the city, it's busy, there's noise, it's the way it is, I'm going to stop apologizing for it. It's me, Jess. I hope everyone's doing well. I'm here with my July TBR, and I got my porch door open. There's rain outside, regular traffic noise, and Nola chewing on a bone as usual. It seems to me like what I've noticed around BookTube is a lot of people having a bit of a burnout or like a book slump. A lot of people having reading slumps. And I do think that the first half of the year was quite, there was so much activity on BookTube. We had the Women's Prize plot alongs. We had the Misery May readathon. There's just so many readathons, so many events, so many people that I didn't know before. I have so many more subscribers to my channel that I, it's, it's been fantastic. But what I do notice around is I notice myself struggling a little bit to read the books that I want to read in the month, having struggled a little bit to read the books that I wanted to read in the month of June, although I think I am going to be able to. That being said, no one's slowing down on this channel. <laughs> I'm not slowing down at all. <laughs> I'm not going to be as fast as some other booktubers, and I'm not going to read as much as some other booktubers, but I am trying to maintain a certain pace. So I have another fairly ambitious TBR for July. There are quite a number of events happening that I want to participate in. And it's just the, the payoff is bigger. <laughs> the payoff is big. So I feel like I need to just make my time to read. I also noticed a trend of people making videos that are supposed to help you read more. Um, so that was interesting. I've been paying attention to what's going on around BookTube and it's interesting the different conversations that are going on. I'm going to talk about four readathons <laughs> in this video and my picks. And I do have a number of books on uh, reserve at the library that are new releases that I'm hoping are going to come in. And those I will also talk about because those I will probably just try to read as they come in. So things might shift around a little bit. I am doing a buddy read, which I will also talk about. So those are the buddy reads are always a big commitment to me. Uh, <coughs> and yeah, so let's just get into it. So the first readathon that I think everyone's pretty familiar with is Jane Austen July. This is hosted, I mean, it's hosted by a couple of different people, but I know about Jane Austen July from Books and Things, which is Katie's channel. Interestingly enough, my daughter used to watch Katie a long time ago. <laughs> And it was my daughter who, I don't know if people know this, it was my daughter who introduced me to BookTube and uh, Katie's channel was one of the first channels that she showed me. So that that's cool. And so I did participate in Jane Austen July last summer. I read, I think I did in the summer before. So the first year I read Sense and Sensibility, which did not vibe with me. And last year I read Persuasion, which I loved. And I vlogged about it when I was in Nova Scotia. This year I'm going to try... Uh, Northanger Abbey. This is more of a kind of a gothic feel. It's about our protagonist, Catherine Moreland, who is obsessed with reading gothic romance and horror. And she's invited to stay at a grand house in Northanger Abbey. It's very mysterious. And her imagination sort of is melodramatic and gets better of her. Uh, so that's my pick. It's short notice, <laughs> but it also sounds like one of the more appealing Jane Austen uh, novels to my taste. So I'm very excited for this. I'm going to come back to this in a minute. So hang on. 
Next up, I want to continue reading books assigned through my daughter's literature courses. Sorry for the dog bone noises. It is really better than the squeaky noises, I think. So I wanted to read something light. And so this time I'm going to read, or this month, I'm going to read The Hitchhiker's Guide to the Gal Galaxy by Douglas Adams. My daughter adored this book. So I don't know if anyone who watches my channel has ever read The Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. Let me know. I did talk about this in my video on my summer plans as one of my ideas to read books that were assigned in my daughter's literature courses at college and that she recommended to me and she loved this and most of the students in her class did not like it at all. <laughs> I'm really wondering if I'm going to DNF it or like it or find it super annoying. I think I tried to read it once a long time ago and I couldn't couldn't stick with it. So let's see how it goes. It's about Arthur Dent, who's having a, it says on the back, is having a really bad day even before the earth gets demolished to make way for a new hyperspace bypass. After the, that, things get much, much worse. So I think it's a very silly uh, kind of, com but it's a, a commentary as well. Like it's a silly, fun kind of adventure, but it's also kind of a commentary on, on capitalism society, you know, superhighways. So I'm looking forward to it. I'm not sure. We'll see how it goes with this one. I've decided to join the Women's World Cup readathon, and they did the draw. Oh gosh, I can't remember now when they did the draw. Maybe a week ago. It's hosted by four booktubers. I'll leave the information in the description box below. Roz at Scally Dandling about the books. Jack at Rambling Raconteur, Alice at Alice and the Giant Bookshelf, and Mark at Book Time with Elvis. And I was drawn a t for a team. So the way the Women's World Cup Redefine works is that you're drawn a team, a country team, and it's that you must read a book from that country. And then there's a series of wins and defeats. And then based on those wins and defeats, you may or may not read books from those other countries. We will see how far I get with this. I think I'm committed to reading like the book that I got uh, the country assigned to me for and the country that I was assigned was Zambia and I'm really looking forward to this because I don't think I've ever read anything from Zambia so I chose a book called Patchwork by Ellen Banda Aku. I have it on hold at the library so I'm really hoping I'm really hoping that it's going to come in in time it's the winner of the Penguin Prize for African Writing from 2010 and it tells the story of a woman whose father was very, very wealthy and whose mother was the, his mistress and that they, they come from very different worlds. And I think it's about her coming to terms with her own identity based on those two different parents and their backgrounds. I'm not quite sure, but that, it sounded good to me. and. That's what I'm going with. <laughs> so fingers crossed on that. Looking forward to joining the Discord and ch chatting with people. I'll leave all the information in the description box below. You might still be able to join in. Check it out and see if you're curious. And then I am, I'm excited because I'm doing a buddy read with Jolene from Bookworm Adventure Girl. It's not for her uh, across Canada reading challenge. I'm actually skipping this month. This month, she did just make a video about it though and made some suggestions of authors from New Brunswick, which is fantastic. If you don't know Jolene at the Worm Adventure Girl, she's also Canadian and she has a readathon going. That's a full year long readathon where you read a book from each Canadian province or short stories or poems. But she and I are actually going to be reading A Paragon because she had made a video talking about authors she's never read before and, and sort of questioning why haven't I read this author before and she talked about Colin McCann in that video. He wrote another really well received book called Let the Great World Spin which I haven't read, but someone in my physical book club had told me that a Paragon was really, really, really excellent. So I propose potentially reading it uh, with her on a video read. And she's been busy, but we've come together. We're gonna try to read it for July. It's a bit of a chunker. It's uh, over 400 pages, 450 pages. I guess it's not a chunker, but it's long-ish. And it tells the story of two different children and I'm not giving anything away here because it's the basis of the story, but two different children who die uh, in the conflict or as a result of the conflict 
between Palestine and Israel. I think it's meant to be a fairly moving tale. I sort of started it, but I, I'll have to go back and start reading it again because I don't recall all of the characters. But it was sucking me in right away because even though it's long, it kind of has these very short uh, sections. And the other cool thing about this is that I found out after watching Elizabeth's channel, uh, Bookends and Books, that there's actually a readathon that I didn't know about because she was talking about her summer plans. There's a readathon that I didn't know about that is called Booktube at War. I think that's what it's called. I just have the war challenge in my notes. <laughs> yeah, so it, I think it is called Booktube at War, exclamation mark. And it was created actually by a viewer of several Booktube channels that goes by DDB. And I'll leave the information in the description box below. And you can either go watch Elizabeth's video about her summer plans or you can watch. It's hosted by Michael and Roger. I'll leave their... Uh, I'll leave all the channels for all the readathons in the description box below. There's just too, so many booktubers and too many to name. And I wonder if they'll be irritated if I tag them all. <laughs> so I'll, I'll just try to speak about one person from each challenge. So this is a challenge where you read fiction books about war or where war is uh, an essential part of the background to the story. And I think for sure this qualifies. So just quickly, the synopsis says, uh, Bassam Aramin is Palestinian, Rami El Hanan is Israeli. They inhabit a world of conflict that colors every aspect of their daily lives. So, yeah. <laughs> From the roads they are allowed to drive on to the schools, their daughters, Abir and Smadar, each tend to the checkpoints, both physical and emotional, they must negotiate. Their worlds shift irreparably after 10-year-old Abir is killed by a rubber bullet and 13-year-old Smadar becomes the victim of suicide bombers. Oh my gosh, like I can just tell this is going to be a really sad book, obviously. <laughs> when Bassam and Rami learn of each other's stories, they recognize the loss that connects them and they attempt to use their grief as a weapon for peace. Yeah, I've heard, I've heard really good things about this. I'm really excited, Jolene. I hope you're excited too. So those are kind of maybe my priorities in terms of the challenges. And then a really fun challenge that I just found out about right before I sat down for filming this video is a bit more of like the gamification of reading <laughs> that I sometimes get involved in. It's a little bit of another side of booktube, I think. But it, so uh, I heard about this from Eric at Breakeven Book. He hosts the Reindeer Readathon every year in December, which I've, I've traditionally participated in, and the May the Forest Read With You uh, Readathon, which I just participated in. And this new one is a readathon inspired by The Hunger Games. So, you know, if you want to just reread The Hunger Games series, <laughs> that would probably be really fun to do this summer. And you could do that and join one of the teams. There's a Discord and there's so many prompts. There's no way that I could go through all of the prompts in this video and you wouldn't want me to. But I did go back and look at the prompts and I was able to figure out how to fit the rest of the books that I want to read and even these books that I've just talked about into the prompts. The prompts have points associated with them, but if you join a team, I think the way the winning team wins is just by page count. And I think they have a way of calculating the average number of members of each di district. So each district is a team, and then they have a way of calculating the average pages by the number of members in each district on each team to figure out who wins at the end. And I think they actually have prizes like a $20 Amazon gift card. I can't imagine for everybody on the team, but we'll see. Seems like a lot of fun. So I'm just gonna go through the ones I already mentioned and talk about the prompts that fit with the Hunger Games prompts and then talk about the other books that I'm going to read. So the prompt that I'm going to read Northanger Abbey for for the Hunger Games Readathon is the District 9 prompt because it's 100 points. I picked all the high points. A book with great character growth is the prompt and I think that Catherine Moreland is going to have character growth because it does say on the back in the synopsis, as comic misunderstandings ensue, she comes to understand the gap between fantasy and reality false friends and true feeling. 
So there's some kind of coming of age aspect to this or character growth to this. So I've decided to put it in with that prompt. Then Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy is going to satisfy the prompt for District 1, which is read a book with a shiny cover. And this book has a shiny cover. That's 75 points. So far, 175. I can do the math. In terms of the buddy read with Jolene, there is a prompt. This brings me to my big project for July, which is Middle March, which I've talked about before. I don't want to spend too much time talking about it, but I have made myself a schedule and I am going to read this in July. <laughs> and this is for the prompt Outlast. This one could also satisfy this prompt, but this one is definitely, well, they're both going to be read for sure because I wouldn't want to let Jolene down. It's 100 points, so you can actually repeat the prompt. So this would be like 200 points, and it's to read, it's Outlast Your Competitors, read a book over 400 pages. Boom. So that's 200. So we're up to, we're up to 375. I like that. Now we get to the books that are my hopefuls that I've picked for some other of the prompts for the Hunger Games uh, read along. If you watched my mid-year freakout tag video, I've already talked a little bit about this one, uh, The Memory of the Animals, which I have out in the library by Claire Fuller. I haven't cracked this one open yet, so I'm probably going to have to renew it uh, or read it very quickly. Hopefully I'll be enjoying it and it will go fairly quickly. This satisfies the prompt for Katniss because the story is about a woman named, well Katniss the prompt is a female protagonist. It's only 50 points because it's one of the easier prompts, but it does follow a woman named Nephi who has agreed to get a vaccine for, uh, against a plague that this is a dystopian book, so it's out of, maybe it's a little bit out of the norm for what you would expect from Claire Fuller. I'm still interested in reading it, and so it's about a pandemic, and she's agreed to take an experimental vaccine trial in London, and that's all I really want to know about it. I'm, I'm really, I love Claire Fuller. I loved her book on Settle Ground. I gushed about it. So yes, that <clears throat> is happening. 375, 425. And then I have to read Milk Fed. As the commenter said, it matches my nails. I also talked about this in my mid-year freak out tag. And this one has been recommended by loads of people to me and I'm really looking forward to reading it. I haven't read anything by Melissa Broder. And I know that this is about maybe a woman with an eating disorder. So Jewish women and calorie counting, can't wait. Uh, and this is satisfies the prompt for Pita, which is a weird prompt. It's read a book with a cover that is sunset orange, or that has sunset orange on the cover, and I think that this qualifies. You guys tell me what you think. That's worth 75 points. Which brings us up to, I think, 500 if I'm correct. So this is where I'm going to need your help, everyone. It's at this point where I'm starting to have like a pile of possibilities because there's just so many books that I want to get to and some of them are new releases that I just got out of the library. And I'm really in the mood to read horror, kind of, yeah, horror, dystopian. That I'm in that mood now because it's... We're getting into summer. We're getting into the creepy vibes. I always find summer is a really creepy uh, vibe. So we'll talk about the possibilities that I have here and maybe let me know in the comments below what you think I should go for. The first one that I really want to read is The Birthday Party by Laurent Mauvigny. This is a French author. I know that people, some people, Eric, <laughs> It, we're disappointed that this didn't make it through to the shortlist for the International Booker Prize. And I've talked a lot of, and he's at least talked a lot about this book on his channel. And he's convinced me 100% to read this. <laughs> so if you're, if you're out there, you might want to vote. If you think that I should read this book, I think it's a very slow burn. It's a, it's a party and where things start happening, they get weird messages and they seem to be people around the house and it's the, the tension builds over a long time. And this is also an over 400 page book. So if I read this, it would also be 100 points for the Hunger Games. So if you think I should read this, leave me um, some kind of a party symbol in the comments below. 
The next one is uh, Lakewood, which I just got on the recommendation of another booktuber. I can't remember who it was now, by Megan Giddings. This is another horror story, and it's, well, it satisfies this, the prompt for Rue for book by a BIPOC author. It's worth 75 points. And I'll just read you a bit from the back. It says, when Lena Johnson's beloved grandmother dies, and the full extent of the family debt is revealed. The black millennial drops out of college and takes a job in the mysterious and remote town of Lakewood, Michigan. On paper, her new job is too good to be true. All Lena has to do is participate in a secret research program. Like it's giving me nonfiction Henrietta Lacks vibe, which was actually a true story, which was very upsetting. If anyone's read it, you'll know what I'm talking about. It's like they're they're make they're doing tests on people. Provocative and thrilling, Lakewood is breathtaking novel that takes an unflinching look at the horror that has been forced on black bodies in the name of science. Like I do think that this will be pretty upsetting, but I also I don't know. It was really it's really gotten some good attention, and I'm curious about it. So if you think I should read this one, leave me like a sciency. Uh, a science maybe a microscope, I think there's a microscope, or a, so, or a like potion, some kind of science-y emoji. And then I just got this out of the library, What Moves the Dead by T. King Fisher. I've heard a lot of people talking about this one. This is a, a novel about possessed wildlife. <laughs> sounds like a bit of a horror story. It says, when Alex Easton, a retired soldier, receives word that their childhood friend, Madeline Usher, is dying, they race to the ancestral home of the Ushers in the remote countryside of Ruritania. What they find there is a nightmare of fungal growths, possessed wildlife, uh, surrounding a dark, pulsing lake. Madeline sleepwalks and speaks in strange voices at night, and her brother, Roderick, is consumed by a mysterious malady of the nerves. So this is like another virus book, and it's another weird one. There's a lot of different prompts that this could satisfy. I think one of the prompts is a book, read a book featuring animals. Another one is read a book set in nature. Um, I think they're all 75 points uh, in terms of the Hunger Games prompts. But so yeah, if you decide that I should read this TK, uh, this T. King Fisher book, then I guess I would say leave me. What do we have? A rabbit on the cover and a mushroom on the cover. So leave me either a rabbit or a mushroom emoji. I don't know if there is a mushroom emoji, but if there is, leave me a rabbit or an, a mushroom emoji. It's a pretty cool cover, actually. Very cool. A nice short, short little book, too. And then almost in direct opposition to that short little one is Our Share of Night by Mariana Enriquez. I just saw it on the shelf of the library. I was like, oh yeah, I should take that. I really want to read that. I wanted to get to her short stories last fall and I didn't get to them. This sounds so good, y'all. If you haven't heard about it, I'll just read you a little bit from the inside flap. It reads, a young father and son set out on a road trip devastated by the death of the wife and mother they both loved. United in grief, the pair traveled to their ancestral home where they must confront the terrifying legacy she has bequeathed. The women they mourn came from a clan like no other, a centuries-old secret society called the Order that commits unspeakable acts in search of eternal life. Like already there, I'm just like, okay, a cult, let's do this. So in terms of the emoji, well, in terms of the prompt for the Hunger Games readathon, it's pillage for a weapon, a book with a weapon on the cover, and it's worth 100 points. Plus it would be another, oh no, it's worth 100 points because it's over 400 pages. I'm not sure how much pillage for a weapon is worth. And I thought like the nails, these look, these nails look like they could be a weapon. So yeah. So you can either leave me, I guess leave me a weapon, <laughs> a knife, or uh, some other kind of weapon in the dagger. I don't know what weapons there are in the emojis, but leave me a weapon or something that you associate with cults. Um, in the, I should have thought of these before I started this idea, but I just thought it would be fun to get some voting going on in the comments below. So maybe get to this. We shall see which of those I get to. Those are sort of my possibilities in terms of reading more horror and 
you know, suspenseful books. I'm really, really excited because I do feel like the more serious books that I've been reading have really, <laughs> you know, it's that a, par a Paragon's going to be really serious. Patchwork's probably going to be pretty serious. So I promise we're almost finished. I just have two more books to talk about that are on, that I've requested from the library. The first is Chain Gang All-Stars which has been talked about all over booktube. Everyone says how fantastic it is. When I kind of want to get in on the conversation and participate, it's another dystopian uh, novel by Nana Kwame Ajay Brenya. I hope I'm saying that correctly. It's a set in a prison and I don't know. I don't even know what happens. I just know <laughs> that it's been talked about in a very positive way by um, both Gemma and Scott, and so that I put on hold as soon as I saw those videos. And hopefully it'll come in. I don't know if it'll come in or not, so it might be, might have to get moved till August. And then the other one that I just saw, so Jennifer over at Jennifer Loves Books just talked about this book as being her first, potentially her, well, I guess her first five-star read of the year. And that got me, that got my attention. So I went ahead and I put a hold on it. Uh, at the library, we'll see if it comes in. It's These are all in transit, so they're coming. These books are coming. I just a question of whether I get to them in July, which we all know I'm not gonna get to all of these books, but it's so fun to have a mix to talk about and get excited about reading. So the book is I Have Some Questions For You by Rebecca Mackay. I hope I'm saying that right, Mackay, McKay. And this is a mystery, but like a literary mystery, I, as I understand it, and it just sounded really good and I've heard other people talking about it and I've seen posts about it on Instagram uh, as well. So we shall see. I'm, I'm still really stoked for reading everybody and I'm really looking forward to August. There's so many readathons going on. I'm really looking forward to that trashy readathon that um, Shelly's hosting. I don't know who she's hosting it with, but I'm really excited as usual and I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you're a new subscriber to my channel, welcome. I didn't say that at the beginning of the video, but I'm really happy to have you here. And I don't know, maybe introduce yourself in the comments below if you're new. And I will see you very soon uh, for the next one. Bye for now. Oh, well, now we have sawing noises. I think they're actually planting a tree on my tree, which is a positive thing. So we're just going to put up with these background noises and I'll try to fix the audio. And I was wondering what I would have for my intro and there we have it. It's something almost happens. So I'm going to talk about one, two, one, two, three, four. And did I say mid-year wrap-up before? Oh my goodness, I hope not. In the mid-year freak-out tag. Nola, Nola, stop eating, stop eating the outer door. Oh my goodness. Okay, so.